uh, for Bloomfield Township, the Monday, November 4th meeting. Uh, for those of you who may not have been here before or not familiar with what we're doing here, anybody watching perhaps, um, the Planning Commission is a seven-member board. It's appointed by the Board of Trustees. We're a recommending body, so whatever we decide here will then go to the Board of Trustees for a final approval or not. Uh, and that gives you another opportunity if you have something to say to them. Um, tonight, um, it takes four votes, no matter how many people are here, it takes four votes to, in the affirmative to pass any resolution or not. So, um, it, the, uh, but I think tonight we have, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, we have six here. So uh, we have a quorum, so we can take it to business, but it still takes four votes in any in yes or no. Um, so I hope you know, this provides some um, insight as to how we work. Um, I just said the attendance, we have, we have a quorum. So the first item would be uh, approval of the minutes from the last meeting. You all, had an you all got them in the packet. Are there any comments, corrections, or any, anything? Then I, can I get, I need a motion then, please. So uh -huh. moved. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor say aye for approval. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, Public comments. If you have anything, anybody here wants to have anything to say other than what's on the, we're going to have plenty of time on what the item on the agenda. But if it's something, somebody has something they want to say that, okay, I don't see any hands raised. I don't see anybody jumping up. So we'll move on then. The item we have tonight is a site plan approval, a site plan re request, excuse me, uh, for a 40 Square Lake Road to Clean Express Car Wash. So, uh, Andrea, I think that you'll, you'll do the presentation for us. Yes. Okay. Hi, good evening. Thank you. Um, Andrea Bibby from the Planning Division here at Bloomfield Township. Um, this evening I am presenting a uh, consideration to the Planning Commission um, for your um, input regarding a site plan uh, at 40 East Square Lake Road. You can see the property highlighted here outlined in the red on your screen. Um, the site parcel that we're talking about is actually immediately south of Square Lake Road there, formerly the Tim Hortons drive through and this is also a parcel that you can see is a single zoning lot that also includes the rusty bucket that faces Woodward Avenue. So I think as many of you are familiar with this site which is located at the northeast corner of uh, Square Lake and Woodward. Um, the proposal is to construct a new um, express car wash in the same location as the previous um, Tim Hortons. So the property owner, which is a Jonah Properties, is seeking approval uh, for this fully enclosed 11,000 square foot, 524 square foot clean express car wash at 40 East Square Lake. The property, as you can see highlighted on your screen, you can see there is the um, red B3 classification, which is sort of that, um, that pass through lot that goes from Square Lake to Woodward. You can see the dark red indicating a B3 zoning classification. And I also wanted to point out that this particular site does have um, double zoning or has uh, two different zoning classifications highlighted in the uh, blue color, which would be on the eastern portion of the property. That is zoned P1. The intention for the P1 district, we can actually see there's a similar zoning classification on the opposite side of Woodward behind the shopping center. The intention of that P1 um, zoning classification is, is just that. It is for the use of uh, as a traffic thoroughfare and for, and for parking. Um, it is not intended to be used or occupied by, by a building or a use. So I just want to point out that even though we do have two zonings um, on this parcel, that the um, site plan does comply with the provisions of both of those zoning classifications. So the good news is no uh, variances uh, associated with the, this proposal. So just to tell you a little bit more about what the uh, application is, um, again, this is a approximately 11,000 square foot fully enclosed car wash. Um, our zoning ordinance under the B3 classification does allow for auto laundries within the B zoning district as a permitted use. Um, one of the criteria of car washes is that they are fully enclosed. And when we say fully enclosed, we mean vacuum cleaners, everything is actually gonna be contained inside of the building. And then the car wash portion where the 
the conveyor belt where the car enters into the car wash will actually be located along that westerly property line where the property um, essentially abuts up to the back of the CVS shopping center. So most of the activity is going to occur um, to again to the west side of the building which abuts up to that CVS parking lot. Um, so with that, the hours, the proposed hours of operation for this use do fall within the um, category of um, acceptable hours of operation within the township. Their request is Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So um, operating within our regular hours of operation, so no special um, consideration for the hours of operation. Um, the, um, the business that is being proposed to us which is Express Car Wash, does have um, various locations. Um, uh, specifically, they have uh, 90 locations. They're headquartered in Ohio, and they have operations across Ohio, Indiana, and Pennsylvania, and they currently have 10 under development within the state of Michigan. So that's just trying to tell you a little bit about the business themselves, and I also know that we have a representative in our office um, that can also speak to the, their business. So in terms of the site plan itself, um, again, the master plan, um, this does comply with the master plan, which designates this um, parcel to um, be a, a commercial, and which in case it does comply with the, that commercial classification. Um, and then within our zoning ordinance, we have all of our particular um, standards for consideration for site plan review. In this instance, um, the, this, the, app, the uh, patron to the car wash, um, they, can, they can access the queue line to get into the car wash queue in this location. They do show on their site plan approximately 19 cars that are stacked up before you hit the end of the um, the queue line, and uh, most likely traffic will be entering on from Square Lake Road, entering into the site where there'll be a curb that runs uh, to the east side of the vehicles that are stacked here, in which they then will queue you through the wait line, and then to the south of the property there is um, there are pay stations in which um, the pa uh, patron can come in, pay at the pay station, and then what they do is they enter inside of the building, which again is a conveyor belt system, um, and which the cars will then pass through on the conveyor belt. At that point, they have an opportunity to exit the uh, car wash area, and they can then choose to exit the site either via Square Lake Road, or they can also choose to exit the site by then coming through that P1 zoning district that I referred to earlier, that bl blue sliver, and then they would come around, and then they could go through the, um, the Rusty Bucket parking lot. I do want to note, because this is one zoning lot, that there is a shared access agreement in which there is an acceptable um, uh, cross access between vehicles that may be crossing between this property. So, so they do have um, ingress and egress available from both um, Woodward Avenue and Square Lake Road. Um, and they are also, in terms of the site itself, they are proposing all of their parking to be uh, covered and enclosed. And again, if the, if the patron so chooses, they can exit the car wash, traveling north, and then they can come around, they can enter into the enclosed area, which would then have the vacuums as well as um, staff necessary staff parking. So the parking uh, for the staff as well as the patrons, anything that would be utilized is actually enclosed inside the building. Um, let's see. So the parking layout shows uh, 22 spaces, which includes one barrier-free space. The parking, uh, parking requirement for the car wash is one space for per, per employee. So they have ample parking um, to uh, handle their employees. Um, the traffic, there was a traffic study, which is a, a copy of that has been provided within your staff report, that was um, completed by Manic and Smith Group and was reviewed by traffic engineer Fish, uh, Township's traffic engineer Fishbeck, in which they determined that the traffic study um, has been completed and they do have a series of memos that do um, address um, their comments leading up to uh, their last memo, which is dated October 30th, 2024, in which they find that the traffic study has been completed to meet the standards of the township. Um, so that has been the traffic uh, movements, access on site, in an ingress, egress um, have been uh, reviewed uh, and a traffic study provided by the applicant.
Um, also want to note that along the north side of the property, there is a safety path which does cross over the site. Any changes or um, damage that may occur to that uh, safety path throughout construction would be required to be repaired at the owner's expense. Um, in, in addition to that, in terms of our site requirements, the applicant is providing a eight foot high masonry brick uh, enclosure, trash enclosure to the rear of the site, which is required, um, as well as a loading area has also been provided in the rear of the building, which is also a requirement of um, a site plan application. So this is actually a nice uh, overlay of the site plan um, over the aerial. Um, the property, the only immediately adjacent residential properties would be immediately to the east of the site. Um, and you can see here that with the buffer of the landscaping, there's also the parking lot, which is that P1 zoning classification. And then we're about, I think we're about 57 feet, 60 feet or so before we even get to the vehicle uh, line um, from, the, from, the res from, the, from that easterly property line. So this kind of gives you an idea of where, how the site will overlay over what, where that existing uh, Tim Hortons building is. And then now what this does is this sh shows you the overall site as I spoke earlier that this is considered a single zoning lot in which both the rusty bucket um, and the car wash do occupy a single parcel. This is not uncommon within the township. There's uh, multiple um, examples of multiple buildings on a single zoning lot. So this is not something that is uncommon or unusual. Um, this is just, that's the configuration of the property and um, it makes sense to look at this as one single zoning lot as opposed to single separate lots. Um, in terms of the landscape plan, um, a landscape plan was provided and reviewed by our township's landscape architect, Michael J. Duell, for conformance with the ordinances. Their report, dated October 30th, 2024, concludes that the proposed landscape improvements meet the intent and standard of the zoning ordinance. They note that prior to tree removal, the tree removal permit, which would be permitted any time that you're constructing, asking to remove trees, this is part of a site plan application, they will be required to secure a tree permit. And the memo from Michael J. Duell, which um, would have to be um, met in order to be part of the consideration by the board this evening, is to have the criteria addressed by Michael J. Duell. And again, what that states is prior to a tree removal permit, the applicant must revise the plans to include a comprehensive tree removal plan to ensure accuracy accuracy in the field. Um, the applicant is well aware of this criteria, um, just a little more clarity as it um, involves which trees are being removed and how they're going to be replaced. That's come from our landscape architect. Um, based on the 22 parking spaces, as I stated earlier, four parking lot trees are being proposed in conformance with the ordinance. Um, the report also notes that two existing trees are proposed to remain in the green belt area of the site. So um, when we talk about green belt requirements, we do require um, a landscape buffer to be located within that front parking lot setback, which in this case would be along Square Lake Road. The applicant has provided a, um, a, a buffer, a green belt, if you will in that area as well as providing ample landscape islands to in, to the north elevation as well as well as adding some additional trees along that easterly elevation adding some parking lot interests along here to the south of the building as well as additional trees located here on the east of the building so the applicant um, given the amount of um, impervious uh, area that they have or a non impervious area I should say in order to do the plantings you can see that they are doing the best and maximum as much as the green space as they can on the site. Um, here you can see an overlay of the property which shows the, the to the left of the screen would indicate the um, ingress and egress from Square Lake Road. Um, and then you can kind of see the, um, the lane in which a uh, patron would enter in, drive around to the rear of the building, go to the pay station and then proceed through the car wash. In terms of the building uh, materials themselves, um, the building materials would be very compatible um, with the um, design of other buildings within the township as well as in the area. They're consistent. The building materials um, include a fiber cement siding as well as brick for the majority of the building. Um, the fiber cement siding, which is located on the south elevation um, for the car wash exit and vacuum entrance. 
Pay stations are proposed to be covered by nine foot high canopy, so that's the height of the canopy is at nine feet. And all vacuum cleaners, as I stated earlier, will be fully enclosed. Um, light poles are not going to exceed 20 feet in height, so they will be adding some new light poles within the parking lot. They have provided a photometric study indicating any overflow um, lighting onto adjacent properties. They do meet the uh, requirements in accordance with the ordinance, and they do know that um, there is it's measured from 20 feet from grade. They cannot have any lights um, that would exceed that, and they actually have um, provided within their site plan documentation that they do uh, comply with that requirement. So they did a, a nice job on the 3D rendering, so this would be the view um, from Square Lake Road. <laughs> I do want to make mention that this time the applicant has added the signage more as a uh, interest, but they will they do understand that they will have to go back to the design review board um, for any proposed signage. Um, but I just want to make note of that. That is part of the considerations by the planning commission tonight, and a condition would be that the applicant would be required if this. Uh, site plan should go forward and be approved by the township board that they would have to seek uh, a necessary approvals from the um, design review board. This would be a view um, essentially from the um, east. So this would be looking from the, um, I'm sorry, I failed to mention the neighbor, the uh, neighboring um, HOA is Colbury um, Hills uh, Association. And I do want to note that the applicant, uh, uh, Haley Jonah, did submit a letter as well as a copy of a site plan to the HOA chair. You do have a copy of that letter within your packet. And you can see based on tonight's turnout, as well as um, little inquiries that I have received, uh, I am not aware or nor do I know of any major concerns that the neighbors have um, at this time. Perhaps the applicant could maybe add to that, but at this time I, I have not received after sending out any notices, any any net interest from the neighbors. Um, I do want to note that there is an existing masonry wall that does run, which is a requirement between residential and commercial use. That um, masonry wall is not anticipated to be changed during this for this application and will remain as that um, barrier uh, buffer between the residential and commercial. And so that this would be essentially a viewpoint from the, I guess the southeasterly corner of the of the car wash so you can here you can see the pay stations you can see the dumpster enclosure located in the rear of the site and then this is an image of the in interior of the um of the uh in the vacuum area and then here we have some photos of the existing site you can see there on your right hand side you can actually see it's a pretty good um a show uh, illustration, you will, of that um, that masonry wall, that screen wall that is currently in place, as well as the existing vegetation. You can also see that there's a bit of a grade change um, as you go as you travel to the uh, west or from the east to the west. You can see there's a bit of a grade change as it dips down to that parking lot. Again, then this is showing the current uh, ingress and egress from Square Lake Road. So this site plan did have an opportunity to be reviewed by our various departments. Um, the fire part department noting that they have no objections to the proposal, just noting um, some requirements that will be required as it relates to fire suppression, uh, fire hydrants, as well as FDC connections um, that, that is required um, at the time of the issuance of permits and review. Um, police department noted they have no objections to the proposed uh, project. And environmental and engineering services in conjunction with Hubble, Roth, and Clark, who is our um, consultant engineer, has also reviewed the preliminary site plan with respect to the water main, sanitary sewer, storm sewer, storm water management and grading, and they have found that the necessary revisions that have been provided um, they, they do make recommendation for site plan approval subject to approval of the plans by the Township Board of Trustees. HRC also conducted a water analysis and sewer capacity study, um, which determined that there is suitable water pressure and flow available to the site. Um, both reports are included within the packet for your review. And of course, we can answer any questions. I do know that they have an engineer here as well to answer any questions. 
Um, with that, I reviewed the lighting, I reviewed the siding, the signage. Um, I will say that this did also have an opportunity, the site plan, to go before the design review board on October 16th, 2024. Um, the um, site plan was received well by the board members. They did forward it on with a favorable recommendation to the uh, planning commission. And with that, I am asking the board to consider, uh, to hear any public input, and for you to consider under what conditions you may recommend uh, a consideration onto the Township Board of Trustees. As I stated earlier, there would be no uh, variances. Um, they do meet all the bulk standards in terms of height, setbacks, requirements for the site, um, which is always good. Anytime we see new construction, that's always what we're striving for. We're try striving to get a development that complies completely within the within the um, confines of our, of our zoning ordinance. And in this case, they've been able to do that. Um, with that, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions, but as you can see, there's a whole team in the audience that can also speak to any questions you may have. Okay, on the, coming back to the Planning Commission first, before we go to that, any questions? Andrea? Did yes, the, sir. Did the traffic study make any comment about the queuing? It's the same curb cut that's there, right? I'm not changing the curb cut. The traffic engineer's um, report did not have any issues with the queuing, queuing. And I think we can actually, if we bring the applicant up here, I think they can speak to um, their operations and how quickly they can get a car in and out and through that car wash because of the conveyor belt system. Um, and they do show on their site plan, like I stated earlier, I think they showed up to um, 19 or 20 um, 19. cars, um, let's see, stacking already within the queue. Um, yeah, let's see, one. Is, is, can you f hold that frame right there? Yep. Is that, and yeah, that's 20. the engineer's overlay? So the so the curb cut is going to change a little bit. Is that right? No. So that overlay is not exactly not totally accurate. Not totally up to scale. Um, but the only the, the only the only concern the traffic engineer had was there was about there's about and it's it's it's. Uh, within your documentation, there's about a 5% chance a year. They, Because we always have our traffic engineer take the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Based on their numbers and based on their review, they there's about a 5% chance that they may, that the, the operator may have to have people come outside and direct people so that there is no conflicts at that location. But I can also have the applicant speak to that because they were required to provide a management plan, a traffic management plan to our traffic engineer in which they addressed in that worst case scenario, what would you do if there was a conflict there? But in the general in the general um, review, there wasn't any concern that, that, would not, that this would not be enough stacking to accommodate the proposed use. Got it. So my second question is, Yes, we have lots of properties where we have multiple facilities on one parcel. Is the, is the parcel under one ownership? Correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else? I just had that same question. It's not even pertaining to this property, but any property that has more than one use on the same zoning is it a requirement that it's under one ownership or is that just happens to be the case here no not necessarily um, in some instances there could be um, a commercial condominium uh, correct where, where there is you know actual legal description associated with two parcels that's um, been accepted by our, our uh, technically assessor. two different owners yeah correct and then the, the existing wall is it a six foot high wall that's existing right now correct six foot high wall I mean, I, I like the site plan. I was just curious, do, do all the other stores, maybe when the applicant, sure. do all the other stores have indoor parking or is that unique to this location? I, I, I do think that there was some prototype involved with this design. So perhaps you'd like, maybe now would be a good time for you to come up to speak to, speak to that. Well, just, just, be, just want to make sure nobody else has any questions. Understood. First. Not right now. Okay. Yeah, I have some too, but afterwards. Okay, then applicant can, fine, thank you.
Thank you, Andrea and Patty, uh, for working with uh, our team, who I'd like to introduce to you. I'm Richard Russell. I'm at Williams, Williams, Ratner, and Plunkett in Birmingham, 380 North Old Woodward. Um, so Haley, Jonah, and Leith Jonah are with Jonah Properties. They are the owner of the site, uh, the, the, the parcel that is common to both Rusty Bucket and the proposed express wash. We have Dennis Miller uh, with, the, with the tenant who can talk to you about the operations or any of the detail that you may be wondering about. Uh, and then Jake Roulette is with Manick and Smith, uh, the civil engineering firm that helped design this location uh, and this proposed site. So a couple of things just to echo um, a couple of the points that Andrea made. This site is zone B3. Um, when we were first trying to figure out how we were going to make this site work for, uh, for a car wash, um, we met with Andrea and Patty. They were accommodating as usual uh, to having meetings with us so that we could sit down and try to figure out what really was meant by this fully enclosed concept here because Express Wash has not done a site like this anywhere in the country. Um, so we had to, um, and, and we, after meeting with Andrea and, and uh, Patty, it was clear that what that meant was the enclosure of the vacuums, the enclosure of all the light, all the noise, all the mechanical equipment, and so we set to work uh, with Mannequin Smith and Architecture and with the ownership group, uh, and we have been at it for now several months trying to come up with a site that was fully enclosed, uh, took into account all the environmental concerns of noise and light, and, 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 and enclosed those completely within a building, and that we would be able to use the site without requesting a single variance. So we've been at this. Uh, for some time working at this so we could come here tonight and, and, and propose a site that conforms with all of the ordinance standards. Uh, the, the operations of this, of this car wash, which have been, uh, there's a little over 90 stores across the country, um, we can tell you that 95% of the percentile with regard to the use of this site is going to have approximately six to eight cars in the queue at any one time. The queue can handle 19 to 20, um, and there's uh, a very small period of time, um, usually after a heavy snow, maybe after a, a day after, if there's a, a bright, drier day. Um, so there, there, that there may be an, an occasion um, more than you know six or eight cars in the queue, but that's the five percent uh, that we're going to experience a couple of times a year. And due to the operations of this car wash. Uh, at all of the locations that it operates across in the Midwest here, we've learned um, how just to handle that very small period of time. I note that uh, Square Lake Road at this location is a right turn only, so obviously you don't have cars trying to pull out and making a difficult left, um, so it's right turn only there. And, and what has, because the Jonas have owned the site and were the prior uh, landlords for the Tim Hortons, um, they can tell you that when Tim Horton's um, suffering some business, you know, negative business consequences as a result of the COVID experience we all lived through, uh, decided to close this location in 2021. Um, there has been um, some interest in the site from other tenants, but it is, in, it, I think, in the interest of both the township and for the applicant, of course, uh, that this site be redeveloped now. And that this, this is going to allow us to take what was a successful uh, for many years drive-in facility at this location and turn it into something that is going to you know, process what we feel is even less cars um, over the course of a period of days on effectively the same site, working within uh, the confines of your ordinance and not having to, to seek a single variance for uh, design or for setbacks or for height or anything. So. Um, I think that um, in looking at this site and studying it and trying to come up with a plan that we knew would be successful for the business, because it's a, it's a very significant capital investment in closing the site. Uh, this is a very unique concept that has been pursued by this applicant uh, here for this location. So uh, we're obviously very confident in our ability to operate a successful site here, to redo the site, to bring it into uh, conformance with all the ordinance requirements. Uh, and to replace, uh, you know, what is um, a closed business facility on a major thoroughfare in Bloomfield Township. So, um, again, the technical issues, of course, are that there's going to be a ground lease with the tenant. 
The ownership is the same with the Rusty Bucket. We did get the consent of the Rusty Bucket for this uh, business operation replacing the Tim Hortons, so they're fully um, aware of what we're doing. We did communicate with the neighbors, as Andrew uh, mentioned, and we have not received a single comment back. Um, and we feel we're going to be a very successful uh, citizen, corporate citizen in this location. Uh, and uh, we're willing to uh, make the commitment uh, to, to try to do the site right. And, and working with staff has been very helpful in that regard. Moving the project along so that now that we're here, as the design review board saw, uh, we're, we're bringing a quality project to the township. And obviously, the stat, the, all of the, the folks here are here to answer your questions and uh, some of the more technical issues that you may have. Okay. All right. Um, I, I'd like to ask one question first. Um, are you, uh, like other, all the, almost every other one of these car washes today that are being developed, have memberships where people pay from by the month and they just can come in, recognize the license plate, and go straight through? And then you have people who pay in each uh, event. Is that correct? Dennis, why don't you come on up? <coughs> on the business operation side, I'd like Mr. Miller to address right. your question. I think that's a, it's an excellent question. Good evening. Uh, Dennis Miller from Express Wash. Uh, I'm a consultant for him here in town. And uh, we're very excited about this site. And I, like uh, Andrew said, that the, uh, this is the first one we've done with an enclosed vacuums in the whole country. And we just hit uh, wash number 100 this week. So we're not 90 anymore, we're 100. And uh, all owned by Express Wash, and we operate them all ourselves, no franchisees. So we have a group, district managers and regional managers. And we have 10 under construction right now in the Detroit area. So you'll probably see us here and there. Uh, we had two open in Roseville and Gratiot. And uh, very excited about Detroit. And we got Waterford's going to open on Wednesday by the Mire. So we're excited about uh, this area for sure. About the, the gentleman's question about the pay process, though. Oh, yeah. We have, we have the membership program. 20, yeah, I don't know what the rates are going to be here, but twenty nine ninety nine per month. But you can do a single wash, too. You don't have to right. be a membership. But we try to sell the memberships when you come in, of course. To, to the reason I asked that question is because it shows on the plan you have one, one queue on the whatever side it is, the queue line that comes right. through, breaks into two. Right. Um, is one of those the auto automated lane for members, and the other, when they go to the window, have to pay? That's correct, yeah. Okay. So we can, we can you can do it either way. We usually have a person at the kiosk helping someone come through, but if you already have a membership, you can go right through. Okay, on so, the, on so the why, why, why couldn't you, why don't you have two lines coming down one for members, one for pay, so that someone's sitting there with a credit card that doesn't work and they got another card and they have all, the others aren't all backed up all the way out. Uh, we could, but we, don't, we really don't have the room here to do uh, well, two. Well, we have the all that parking. Is on, that, you on can't the one side. That. We, we had the single lane at the top there. Okay, all right. And we wouldn't be able to do a, a double lane there. But in the back, we can, right? We can do that. But there's not, it's not an issue. Okay. It, it runs really quick on the kiosk. The, um, the, the two, I have, there's two, two concerns I, I have, and that is, at the entrance there, you have one in entrance off Square Lake Road. Yes. You have four activities going on at the same time there. Mm -hmm. You have one getting on the queue to go through the car wash. Two, you have cars going into the vacuum area. Mm -hmm. Three, you have cars coming out of the vacuum area. Mm -hmm. And four, you have cars coming out of the wash area. All right into that one area, one space. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there was a traffic study. I get that. And right. They're the professionals. But it seems right. to me that that's really pretty, con it could get pretty congested up there. Well, we do. And especially if, if the, it gets backed up, and then ha does the belt stop or automatically so that cars aren't dumping out into that? Yeah, we do have, the, the line itself, the tunnel line has a, has a switch there. We can, okay, we well can. anyway, what about that? There's We're four gonna... activities right there. <laughs> I'll have my engineer. Yeah. Uh, Hi, I'm Jake Carlett with the uh, Mannequin Smith Group. Um, yeah, so there, the first thing there is an automatic sensor. It's not even a manual button that the employee has to push or anything. That'll stop the wash in the case of any sort of backups. Uh, that was a, a, actually a question that Fishbeck raised about the number of activities in that area and their concern about traffic movements. So in order to address that as part of our traffic management plan, uh, one of the things we did was add quite a bit of additional signage. You can't see it on this sheet, but there's a yield sign coming right out of the uh, vacuum area so that they Do know. Do you want to use this to kind of yeah, give a little direction of the signage? Yep. So uh, 
the intent yeah. is for our vehicles traveling up this road to have the main right away. They'll have priority on leaving here. Um, then vehicles exiting the wash here, they're going to come out. There's a yield sign for vehicles. Oh, I lost my light. Anyone leaving here is going to have a yield sign right about there to let them know that these people have priority. There's a stop sign and a stop bar right here to prevent them from just pulling right out here. And there's also some a directional sign directing them to wait, uh, wait for clearance uh, here so that they don't stack and block this lane. Um, and there'll also be, we have one employee at all times dedicated to outdoor, uh, either helping people with the kiosks or traffic flow if there was any sort of uh, backups or congestion. But uh, a lot of directional signage was added to the uh, site plan to satisfy Fishbeck's requirements to, to manage this area effectively without conflict. So you, you feel it, it's control, it can be controlled. It's not gonna be a hazard if everybody coming in every different direction. And yeah. Okay, and the only other thing I, 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 can, I think I see from this where it's not gonna be a problem, but something I thought about when I looked at this is that the last operation inside the building for the cars being washed, mm -hmm. the last thing that happens is a blow, the, the blower comes on and dries the car off. Yes. Which is really noisy, Yeah, we really actually... loud. But I see it's at, the, at the, this end of the building and it's not up against where the houses are and I suppose it's far enough away. But um, is that, do you think that, is that a concern? So we've actually provided a sound study for that blower. It's the same one we use in all of our other prototype buildings even that aren't fully enclosed here. But uh, we provided that to the township that shows the, the noise level at different distances away from there. And by the time you get to, I think it's 30 to 60 feet you're at the same noise level as a standard road. Yeah, well I see that th that entrance is way down this f part of mm -hmm. the building and the houses or the residential are up on the other end. Yep. So it, le it seems like it's, it's, not, it's not blowing, it's not right at them. So yeah, you're, gonna, you're not gonna have any noise it, issue it on the neighboring property. Okay, but thank you yep. very much. Anybody? No, plus the noise with uh, you have Square Lake Road going with a lot of cars <laughs> yeah, going right, by, so right, I, right. I wouldn't be concerned. Yeah, okay. Anybody? I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So what you what do you want to do? Well, I was going to say that I was, you know, I read all all the materials, of course, but even with the presentation, I'm more um, comfortable with the project than I was even reading it because with having everything fully enclosed as we require uh, certainly will make it uh, less intrusive on the uh, adjoining neighborhood. And uh, maybe that's why they're not here. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, it certainly is a, an upgrade to what's currently there, and they've done a really nice job, uh, and uh, I'm supportive. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Uh, I, I um, go ahead. Question and a, a little comment, but you know they've got a lot of uh, really great technology in their stormwater management. So the bioswales. I mean, they got the mandated attention, but they got uh, vortex. They got the bioswales. Was that your requirement, or was that ship's requirement through engineering? Yes. Required the bioswales and the vortex, or the, just to com comply with the standards that are, are prescribed by Oakland County. It's a county mandate. Duck, yeah. So stormwater would be sitting in, in tandem with the county bioswales. That's an additional to the county request. On this one, there's really not a whole lot of space to make use for one of those. It can't not able to fully satisfy everything that they would normally ask, but in every other site itself, in other counties, other areas, as long as you're showing the intent to meet it and test your ability, they're available. Yeah, because you got the detention in the vortex anyway, so. I thought One thing that they well didn't well mention is they reclaim like 95% of their water, which is actually yeah, very I sustainable. I, I forgot to thorough. mention that. Very well done, uh, nice resolution from a Rubik's Cube of requirements that the township places on it. So uh, we appreciate it. That's polite. <laughs> All right, then I guess we need a motion. Make a motion that we uh, um, make a positive recommendation and move this on to the township board for consideration. Second. So uh, it's gonna list the three, four, yeah. Six. So yeah. based on the site Sorry, plans I, that submitted, um, the uh, Planning Commission, as I said, we want to move this on uh, 40 East uh, Square Lake Road to the Township Board with the uh, following, following requirements of compliance with the requirements of the Township Departments. 
compliance with requirements of the township landscape architect, compliance with requirements of the township's uh, traffic consultant, and then review and approve for signage by the uh, design review board. Thank you. Okay, that's the motion. Did you, did you second it already? Okay, yes. it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Nope. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Good plan. Nice to see Looks you good. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Okay. There's a, uh, there's a gas station right next to it. Yeah. And then there's the traffic turning from red to green, and then everybody's heading east right. from Square Lake Road. <laughs> I, I'm a little skeptic of the traffic pay. <laughs> well, I think it's it's probably less than what Tim Hortons. I think they could be Tim Hortons constant flow of cars country. coming in and out. So it is. Yeah. It takes a little longer for each car to go through. Yeah. So the, the, they would never get another curb cut, though. No. I mean that's no. That thing is gonna. You, you never get to. It's, they're probably making them keep that one there. I think the only, the only thing is that all those four activities happening at the same time, right at the edge. Right. But you know what? The traffic guys say it's okay. So all right. When's, all right. <coughs> when's the Square Lake going to be, the road going to be finished so they can construct this thing? I, I don't know the exact time frame. Is that an interference? I mean, they that would have to be finished first. I would assume. Yeah, well, I before they open, in but yeah, they're yeah. Not well, they, they could come in well, through. Well, they got the first yeah. layer of asphalt Rusty already, already down. I was there today. That's not going to. Yeah. The first layer is already rough. down, so they only have one more layer of asphalt to go. Oh, back. the road you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it was tough getting in there today. I couldn't figure out how to get I in know, there and look at nightmare. it. Yeah. So, <coughs> we do just, have a couple more items on the agenda if you wanted to get through, just to call us. <laughs> you do? I know. Oh my gosh! I didn't even see. We don't have any I no, wait a additional minute. items I'm on the agenda. No, we don't. To, yeah, state that for the record. Okay, we don't have any more items on the agenda. No. <laughs> I'm looking at that and saying, wait, I didn't see anything else. Okay, well, but is there anything, um, items that are not on the agenda that anybody want to bring up for, to bring up for future discussion or an item? Okay, I don't see that. So the next planning commission will be November 18th, mm -hmm. meeting if there's anything. So I guess that's about all we have. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved, seconded. We are adjourned. Thank you. All right.